Good morning. We're in November 12th. Uh, the harvest is obviously over. Uh, it's been so for about a month. But winemaking is still going on. Uh, we just finished pressing our last vats this week, finishing by some uh, Grenache Mourvedre and some Cabernet that had stayed on the skins for about six weeks. Uh, true to our strategy of, uh, of uh, infusion rather than extraction, we, uh, we'd rather keep the juice on the skins for a longer period, but not, not work as hard as extracting uh, uh, from the skins. Um, today what I want to talk about is some of the things that happen when you do experiment. And this year, as you recall, we did a lot of experimenting with whole cluster. Um, we're very happy with um, the way the, the vats taste. Uh, however, what, uh, what has happened with uh, the whole cluster is that the, um, the fermentation didn't go to the full extent. Basically, as the berries stay intact, fermentation occurs within the berry, but sometimes doesn't uh, occur all the way to the end. So after pressing, um, we're left with juice with still quite a high level of residual sugar and with no yeast working on uh, finishing the, that sugar. So what's the risk, you might ask? Uh, well, when there's still food on the table and the yeast are leaving, uh, other uh, microorganisms are interested in that sugar. Uh, first and foremost are bacteria. And uh, the bacteria can uh, degrade sugar into volatile acidity, which is always uh, a negative obviously for a wine. The second is another, another category of yeasts that are called Brett or Brettanomyces, uh, which are a uh, type of yeast that very undesired because it generates uh, flavors of, uh, of, of horse sweat, of manure, uh, and sometimes you, you guys have uh, had a bottle of wine where you thought, well, this is very barnyardy. Uh, typically, that kind of flavor is due to bread. So, um, we have sugar in, those, uh, in, the, in this juice. Uh, we're trying to prevent all those bad things from happening, so we have to work on, uh, on starting the yeast again. We're following a protocol. I'll show you a, uh, a, a drawing of it. Right here, where basically you start with a little bit of water and sugar, you add yeast, a strain that's selected for its capacity to finish, uh, finish sugar in the presence of, of alcohol. Uh, and as you can see, there are steps. Every day, you've got to double up uh, your fermenting uh, juice. So today's Saturday, I'm at the winery. We've been doing this for three days now. And uh, I'm gonna be, um, and I'll show you what uh, the vats are. So we've set up little vats right here um, with a heating plate in it because you've got to keep the temperature at about uh, 22, 25 degree uh, Celsius uh, in order for the yeast to, uh, to ferment properly. On each vat, we keep a tab of um, the density, which means how much the yeasts have uh, degraded. So as you see, we started with density of 1,024. Yesterday we were down at 1,004 right here. And so it means that the yeasts are working. Uh, as a reference, uh, density 1,000 is water. If you have sugar in it, the density is above 1,000. If you have nothing but alcohol and water, the density is below uh, 1,000. And then we have those vats where we have the juice that needs to ferment. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate this to, uh, to the, the fermenting uh, vats. Hopefully we'll keep our fingers crossed and uh, we'll finish the sugar before uh, anything bad can happen to, uh, to those vats because, you know, they're, they're dear to us. They're, they're our whole cluster experiment, not all of it, but uh, a portion of it. And uh, we have high hopes for, for these wines.